Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 4, Episodes 10 and 11. Okay, two very good episodes. Lots of backstory for Ren and Nora. A little bit of a glimpse at Ren's semblance. I'm still not quite sure what it is, but it has a calming effect. I'm not quite sure if it's just calm or complete elimination of emotions at that particular second? I'm thinking more of calm, though the semblance could be the total suppression of emotions because the Grim feed on fear. And they do turn completely gray. Yes, so that tends to symbolize a removal of something. Mm -hmm. And all color disappears, and color is a very important thing in the Ruby universe. Extremely so. Because after he stopped and their colors reverted, Nora said she was scared. But she didn't seem morally terrified like she was before. Right. And I'm almost thinking that Nora was from a village that was attacked by this particular Grimm as well. Would make sense. I like how I keep going back to Oscar and his conversations with Ozpin. And interesting to see that particular guy there. Does I don't think he knows what's going on, but it's kind of interesting. Yes, that he just happens to be there where Oscar slash Osbin is and provides that bit of gruff assistance, which could be entirely philanthropic because it came with the line of don't let small obstacles stand in your way, which also gives a slight insight into the character that he's one of the ones to plow through obstacles to get to what he wants. Mm -hmm. And I also have this feeling that he actually might be a... I I'm just going to say it uh, a nice guy in most things but because he sees the world not going the way he wants it to he needs more power so he goes towards salem to get the power he needs to plow through the obstacle that's in his way to get what he wants entirely possible because some of the best villains are those that have good and logical reasons for what they're doing who in their own minds are as every bit as honorable and chivalrous as the heroes they're the good guy in their own way but the rest of the world doesn't see them as a good guy because their actions go against what everyone perceives as the best or what they view as good way of doing things and through these episodes since we're on salem's henchmen we saw three of the four in this episode because we had that interaction with osbin slash oscar we had cinder's training against the grim and then we had Tyrion's return to Salem's compound. And he didn't get punished at all other than saying she was disappointed in him. Though if she knows him well enough, that would be the best way in her head to punish him. Yeah, so it was very interesting that line she had at the end about a clear eye being clouded. It was almost like she was talking about the damage to Crow was actually a negative. Mm, the way I took it is... Another eye of Ozpin was clouded. Ah. And I don't think it was a negative, but it wasn't the thing she wanted at that time. She wanted... Ruby destroyed as a reward for Cinder. And it's kind of interesting what I said when I saw him crying and starting to beat the living heck out of the Grimm. I was like, well, he was a very insecure child. <laughs> and I think that's actually true for his character. He wasn't a very secure child and no one nurtured him properly in his insecure moments, so that insecurity grew to be something that kind of overwhelmed him. Entirely possible, and I didn't think you could wail on a Grimm of that level for that long without having it die slash dissolve. And also the change in him as he's attacking it, from the hysterical sobbing and crying to the maniacal laughter. And also Cinder's expression. Oof. Yeah. I'm thinking she wants less and less to do with his organization as things go along. Mm-hmm. But it's a little too late for her because she's been so badly injured, plus she has the Fall Maiden's power. They'll never let her go. And even if she manages to fully harness the power, she probably won't be able to fight her way free. And even if she does, she's now one of the Maidens. They'll hunt her forever. And... I was actually surprised she was using that one arm. Though I can't seem to tell if she's actually using the rest of her body to fling the arm out, to fling the fire out, or if she's actually moving it. It seemed to be mostly immobile in other shots. Yeah, so I'm really not sure if that's the power working, 
her body working to create the motion or if she's actually managed to have a little more of a recovery. Or if it's just enough to move the arm in that way because she may not have full motion of it or her hand may be damaged in such a way that she can't really grab anything with it, but it's enough that she can move the arm in arcing motions. That's why it looks more like a whip coming off of it or blades being thrown. Mm -hmm. Another nice thing about the backstory parts of, for Rin and Nora is we also get those little moments between them, like the whole holding hands thing and that moment up in the cave where like, oop, dang. Yes, but it was also nice in the flashbacks that they used Nora's song. It was a very subtle instrumental version of it in the background when Ren finally goes, are you okay, after he um, uses his semblance on her. And he reaches out for a toy mallet. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's kind of cute slash interesting of, oh, so yeah, that's probably why she's stuck with the hammer. And Ren's weapons bear a slight resemblance to the knife that his father pressed onto him. It might even have been reworked into being part of the material of his current weapons. So anything particular about the episodes, nitpicks or otherwise? Well, we got to touch on all members of Team Ruby. We did see Ruby was John and Crow. We saw Yang, who finished tricking out her arm into her colors and got her bike. And we had Wise, who is making good on her escape with Klein's assistance. And boy, was it really obvious in this episode the uh, personality changes that he has. And I believe you mentioned in one of his first appearances that uh, there was some thought that he was representative somewhat of the Seven Dwarves. Mm -hmm. Which, rather than the Ice Queen, makes Wise Snow White. Though Snow White with a sword. I like that version better. Oh, we also got some more interesting stuff going on with Ironwood and her father. Yes, and I was going to go back to that, but I wanted to touch on all four members of Team Ruby because we had that brief time with Blake and Son and her parents eavesdropping. Mm -hmm. Specifically her, her mother. I have a feeling the father's like, hmm. Pretty much, because it was the mother who knocked the screen down and was acting all, oh, oh my, he's awake. <laughs> Yeah, we're not buying it. Nope. But yes, that stuff between Wise's father and Ironwood and showing more conflict between them and more reasons they don't get along. Mr. Schnee feeling that Ironwood stole Winter away from him. Of That's how he feels about Winter and he's putting Wise aside. Why does he want Whitley now so much to be the heir? Is it ultimately some plan to bring Winter back? That doesn't quite seem right. No, but just throwing it out there. And if the, in a week the borders are going to be closed, I don't think any of our teams are moving towards Atlas. I don't remember where Oscar is supposed to go. Not Atlas. It's another place. Another town that was mentioned in the first couple episodes. Yeah. Haven, maybe? I think so. Also, speaking of people moving places, I don't think Yang is actually... Gonna go after Ruby. I think she's gonna go after her mother because that would be more interesting. Especially since that option was brought up first and it seems to be something she always wanted to do. Though there's also the third option she could actually go after Blake. That would be the third option and I'm sure that's what the fans want her to do, yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of unfinished business between the two of them. Leave aside all Bumblebee speculation and fan fiction, but... It's hard to say because Yang's in a complicated emotional place. She put herself and Ruby at risk when they were younger trying to find Raven. We got that in the flashbacks. And to finally be able to track Raven down, even after everything that her father and Crow have told her about Raven, but it's still that whole sense of unfinished and I want to understand. But at the same time, Ruby's your sister. And I'm pretty sure Blake's your best friend. So I'm going to cast um, my speculation that she actually tries to find Blake. Because that would be interesting. So we're going after Mother. Yes, but Raven's scary. Of course she is. She's related to Crow. <laughs> Yang and Ruby are also related to Crow. Aren't they scary? No, because I believe they're good and they're still young enough to be innocent. <laughs> Anything else? 
Ren and Nora being forced back to Kuroyuri when they didn't want to be. And just the way they did that ending is like, are those Grimm really there? Or is Ren having flashbacks? What's going on? And what is that huge Grimm that left the footprints? Hmm. I'm pretty sure it's the Grimm they showed at the end, the one with the two heads. Mm. Which seems to be like some type of centaur thingy-bobber. Because it was half horse, half something else. Hmm. It may actually have three heads and be a chimera. It could be. We'll see. It looked very interesting and very demonic-like. Uh, most grim do. Yeah, but this one actually resembles more classic human-shaped demons. Because the way its face looked and everything. Mm -hmm. Which in a way is even more disturbing. Especially when you think of the world of Remnant with the light and dark brothers. One creating life in all its form. And the other creating the Grim, mm -hmm. and together them creating the humans. I do like how they managed to pack a lot of stuff into all of these episodes. A lot of little information here and there. And wow, they've certainly developed as they've written these volumes. Yeah, their skill has just improved. The animation, you know, as their budget goes up and they utilize new software and learn new techniques. The only little things I see every now and then, like... When Ren was running into the cave, he was doing this kind of weird kind of trot. And I'm like, I know you guys use motion capture. I want to see the video of that guy doing that motion capture, because that looked awkward as heck. <laughs> he was doing like this little trot thingy, and I'm like, that doesn't quite look right. It didn't quite feel right for that particular scene. And then just some of the child animations with child Ren and child Nora just felt a little off. But we haven't put a lot of children in the series overall mm -hmm. so it's not something that the animation staff has had a lot of practice with i've noticed that these episodes don't really ever feel rushed to me even though ruby doesn't really have that long of episodes and they usually don't have that many episodes per season no episodes feel like they're trying to cram a lot of story into a small area they still seem to be able to spread it out and it make it feel right for the length of the season yeah, even though the episodes themselves are mostly shorter than standard television length, it's not like they're trying to shorten a storyline to get it to fit in. Its pacing works really well. Yeah, unlike another show we've seen recently where some of the first couple episodes felt rushed because they were trying to fit everything into 13 episodes. Hmm. I wonder if it's his semblance he's hiding. You know, how we're speculating that Rin is hiding something other than, could be this, but maybe it's his semblance, because we haven't seen him really use it anywhere else. Yeah, and if we're right in our speculation, well, your speculation about it, removing emotion, that could be seen as such a negative that it could be like crows, and it's not something you talk about. Mm -hmm. Though it would help explain his insane levels of calm if he's able to control it on a much smaller level and just keep his emotions from spiking. Hmm. That, you know, whatever emotion he's feeling, he won't be overwhelmed by it. Mm-hmm, except in the latest episode where he collapses to the ground. Yeah, well, that's kind of rough, because the last time he saw that village was probably right after his parents died. So anything else you want to go over? I think we touched on all... The characters that appeared in the episode, you know, except for Whitley, who only appeared by audio call, still a jerk, because it's like the middle of the freaking night. What do you need a cup of warm milk, you big baby? <laughs> uh, so, shall I move on to final thoughts then? Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed these last two episodes, and I still have to check what the total number may be for this season, because it does feel like we're ramping up to the end of the season here because all the characters are either leaving or getting stuck at a particular spot and they all seem to be gathering or heading off to a particular location. Yeah, well, Ruby's group has been on the move the whole time. Yang's finally ready to move. Blake is ready to make a tactical move. And Weiss is physically moving. So all the pieces are back in motion. So, yeah, I think things are wrapping up to start heading towards the conclusion of the season. I'm excited for that, because I can't wait to see more episodes. I hope this season's ending is 
just as awesome as last season without all the You killed the characters! Bad writers! Bad! Don't make me sad! <laughs> yeah, because now that we know you're willing to kill characters that we like, we have to worry about everyone. Because I don't even think being a title character can save you. At least it's not Game of Thrones. They have a chance. <laughs> The Game of Thrones actors are some of the worst paid actors because if anyone starts to complain, their character gets killed off. <laughs> oh, like I said, overall, I can't wait for the next couple episodes. How about you? Definitely looking forward to them. I'm enjoying the backstory that we're getting on Ren and Nora. I'm glad to see Blake is taking a stand and that Yang is ready to go back out and do things on her terms. Well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 4, Episodes 10 and 11. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, share this with your friends, and go watch some of our other videos. If you want to see more of Lux's art, you can catch it on Tumblr, DeviantArt, and Twitter. If you would like to support this page financially, please check out our Patreon and Coffee links. Lux is also open for commissions.